Ho-ho boardies, welcome to Borderline Games, I'm Gareth and this is the Chrono Jota, some kind of uh, detective mystery um, game, uh, a visual novel, um, let's just start playing and see what's in store, start. This place was an enclosed space, without sound and without light. Ranabuki laid there, curled up on the floor. Her chest rose and fell gently in time with her breathing. She seemed to be asleep. Okay. Wake her up. In order to avoid burdening her mind any further, my consciousness crept slowly up to Ran's brain and gave her a light stimulus to wake her. Okay, what? My consciousness crept slowly up to Ran's brain. Ran opened her eyes and awoke from her dream. The cold floor was a shock to her cheeks and she jumped up from the floor the moment she awoke. But before she could uh, even fully, ar uh, fully rise, she slammed the back of her head right into the ceiling. So it was really low ceiling. Shaking in pain, uh, in pain, she bent back down again. She rubbed her head as she, she looked around, but she couldn't see a thing. She tried to remember uh, just what had happened the last time she'd been awake, but found only a strange mist over those memories. And within that mist... A single silhouette stood out, a girl in a school uniform, with an open notebook in her hands. Ran stared at that silhouette, now acutely aware of the dire situation she was in. It had been too long since she'd last eaten a page from the notebook. Her heartbeat, the pain from her solar plexus, and her perpetually sweat-stained face all reminded her. It's been too long since she'd last eaten a page from the notebook. Some kind of weird... Um, powers that she gets from eating a page from the notebook. Is what are we talking about here? Uh, that her symptoms were about to act up again. Ran tried her best to ignore her increasingly fr frenetic heartbeat, and with a practiced hand pulled out a notebook from the hidden pocket on the inside of her jacket. She gently caressed the rough leather cover of the notebook and her wildly beating heart settled down a little. Like a clownfish returning to its... Anamone? Is that right? <laughs> Anamone? She wanted to open the notebook, but given how dark it, dark it was, she decided not, for, not to for the moment. I need to find some light. She held the notebook under her left armpit and raised her hand, trying to get an idea of the room's size through touch, but it turned out she hardly needed to raise her arm at all to touch the ceiling of this space. Ram was left with no option but to press her right hand to the ceiling and slowly shuffle forwards. She confirmed that this enclosed space was extremely narrow, as if it was a coffin that had been custom fit to her size. Ran decided to give up on escaping for now. She sat down on the ground and pulled her cell phone out from an inner pocket on her jacket. She turned on the phone's flashlight and checked what she was wearing. A winter-styled school uniform, it turned out. She tapped the screen a few times trying to figure out her location, but the no signal indicator on the upper left corner left her stumped. Ran wiped her sweat, illuminated the notebook, and flipped to the page where her personal details were recorded. Okay, currently suffered, suffering from damaged memory, but clearly understands that her goal is to find her girlfriend, Anne Sakura. Suffers from schizophrenia and hallucinates vividly when under severe pressure. Okay, long-term use of uh, olanzapine and therapy conducted by Anne Sakira have helped her recovery, which is her girlfriend. 
receives systemic training in logical analysis and deductive reasoning, but memory loss may lead to impaired abilities. She licked her lips, staring at the clearly questionable listings here, and decided to try her best at performing a recollection to warm up her brain, if nothing else. All right, let's begin recollection. I should choose carefully. I've recorded the term recall. When the notebook has new information, a notification will appear here. Click on the notebook and flip to the corresponding page to check the new information. Okay. I'm an investigative journalist, but when I reached the scene of the crime to conduct interviews, I discovered that the victim was my love. What should I do? Uh, steal police uh, investigation reports. Charge through the police cordon and kiss the corpse. Don't do that. Stay calm and try to investigate the scene. Maybe this one? I've illustrated a stunningly accurate portrait for a client, but they refused to pay me for my work as we contracted. What should I do? Find out why they refused to pay me and resolve the conflict. Steal treasure greater than the value of the com compensation owed me from their home. Uh, convince the nemesis to join with me to gain revenge upon them. I'm going to go with the first one there. I stand before an old two-floor apartment. I knocked on the door to room 102, but nobody answered me. I'm wondering if a friend of mine who might have gone missing is at home or not. What should I do? Lie about being a uh, resident's little sister to get the key from the landlord. Find a spare key hidden near the door or pick the lock and break in. I guess this one. I returned to the school building during the night because I left my homework in my desk in class. But just as I was about to unlock the door, I saw a stranger in the classroom. What should I do? Hmm. Run immediately. Keep my distance. I'm going to say keep my distance. After I got shit-faced with my friends last night, I woke up with a hangover the next day and found that there was a corpse in the midst of our snoring pile. What should I do? Okay. Take a selfie of everyone on the ground. Notice that the corpse is still wearing shoes. Take them off for uh, for her and place them at the entrance where they belong. Twist and turn a bit so that you're not touching the corpse anymore and go back to sleep. Oh, okay. None of these are good options. Um, okay, well... Still wearing shoes. Take them off. Twist and turn a bit so that you're not touching the corpse anymore and go back to sleep. Take a selfie of everyone on the ground. Notice that the corpse is still wearing shoes. Take them off for her and place them at the entrance. Well, not that. But not this either. I guess this is the least invasive. My love is about to commit an alignment by jumping from the edge of the roof. What should I do? Notice that the cops are approaching and try to delay her through a conversation, but to no avail. Obviously this one. Run over and grab her, but to no avail. Oh, but... To, oh, okay. So she does it either way. Tell her that you want to be together with her as you head into the future, but to no avail. Well, that's kind of sad. What would I do? Hmm... Notice that the cops are approaching and try to delay her through conversation. That seems like a sensible one. Run over and grab her seems like... Risky. Tell her that you want to be together. I guess this one. Uh, has anything changed from that? Investigation is eight. Alicrity says four, right? Charisma says three. About properties. Investigation represents the ability to discern contradictions. Uh, this includes contradictions in testimonials, contradictions in space-time, contradictions between knowledge and behavior, and contradictions between reality and physical law. Raising this ability allows Rand to discern tiny contradictions, accurately pointing them out, uh, and pick up a 
minor, uh, pick up my, on minor clues to reconstruct the truth. Charm. Right, okay, so these are the different abilities that you have, I see. Represents the ability to discern emotions. This includes empathizing with the emotions of others, manipulating the feelings of others, attracting the love of others, and understanding the feelings of others. Raising this ability allows Ran to take to social interactions like a fish to water and to manipulate others into willingly sacrificing anything for her. And then we've got Alicrity. Is that how you'd say that? Represents the ability to coordinate the mind and the body. This includes agility and speed, manual dexterity, sharpened reaction time, skillfully lockpicking and escaping disaster. Raising this ability allows Ran to rapidly react to unexpected situations, unmake man-made obstacles, and achieve the avoidance uh, of obstacles or the seizing of opportunities. Okay, I think I've got it. Ran nodded. She felt that her personal information had been greatly improved now, but she was still a bit hesitant. Did she perhaps need to rethink her recollections? Conclude. Ran decided not to recollect any further. She flipped the notebook to its rear cover. On the inside of the rear cover were a few miniature ring sleeves, holding three long strip-shaped bookmarks. Ran pulled out one of those bookmarks and placed it into the first page of the notebook. I've recorded the term bookmark. Now that all the necessary preparations have been made, she closed the, uh, the notebook and placed it back into her jacket. Ran used her phone to illuminate the ceiling. The glowing screen immediately drove away all the darkness, and she soon found that there was a ring-shaped lock keeping the ceiling locked from the inside. She reached out and easily picked the lock, and was just about to push open the ceiling when she grew hesitant. Ran realised that she had no idea what was waiting for her out, of the, out there. Uh, moving recklessly might plunge her into an even more dangerous situation. And keeping the lock to a tiny basement such as this inside the basement itself seemed ridiculous at best. You didn't keep someone confined in a room by locking that room from the inside. Ran couldn't help but wonder what the mastermind would br uh, which brought her to this place wanted from her. Was it Ran herself that did this? Uh, she pulled her hand back from the handle and turned off the flashlight on her cell phone, leaving only the dim light of the screen itself. Hugging her own legs, she leaned against the wall and stared at the phone's wallpaper. It was a selfie of Ranabuki and a different girl with the exact same un uh, school uniform. That girl was her long-lost love, Anne Sakura, who'd been missing for four years. Ranabuki closed her eyes, letting the memory she'd uh, made with her love wash over her. Even though she couldn't recall many of her memories, clearly anymore, she could still remember everything about the two of them as though it's just happened. Remembering the way their shared uh, story had ultimately ended, she raised her head without hesitation. She moved herself back over to the ring lock from before. Then she pushed the ceiling open slightly so that there was just a crack from which she could carefully peer out at the area around. Ice cold air flowed into the underground chamber. Ran shivered a little and exhaled a cloud of steam. Outside she saw a lightless hallway uh, where wooden flooring met mottled walls. The hallway didn't seem all that wide. It had been a long time since Ran had, been, uh, had seen such an old wooden building as this. Ran guessed that she was perhaps in some sort of shack in the middle of the woods at the moment. Her heartbeat remained wild despite the progress she'd made, and the veins at the temples of her face continued to pulse forcefully. She had a skull-splitting headache and couldn't help but keep blinking. She needed to find a safe place and restabilize the rising pressure. If at all possible, she didn't want to have to eat any more paper. Ran took a deep breath, scrunched her eyes a few times and pushed the entire ceiling open. Okay. Sprawled on the edge of the exit, she craned her neck 
and surveyed her surroundings. A wooden hallway appeared before Ran's eyes. Towards the right of the hallway, there were clearly a row of standard-sized classrooms. With both hands, Ran pushed herself up from the floorboards, bringing herself back up to ground level. She looked towards both ends of the hallway. She didn't detect any traces of anyone skulking on either end. Either end. The lifeless dark the darkness seemed to accentuate the chill of the hallway. Every breath Ran took made her lungs hurt, like they were being frozen over. Though the windows remained immobile thanks to the wooden grill holding them in place, Ran could still hear the freezing wind howling outside the room. Ran leaned against the window and stared blankly at, uh, outside blankly. She couldn't figure out how she was connected to this di dilapidated school at all. She'd escaped a small mystery only to find herself in the midst of a larger one. The pressure mounting against Ran was starting to strain her limits, and not even the ice-cold air could stem her sweating. With a trembling hand, she tried to wipe her sweat away. Even though she was missing many of her memories, Ranabuki was somehow certain that she was no stranger to a, uh, anomalous events like this. But she couldn't remember any of the specifics. All she could remember was that each of those events had been miserable experiences for her. And that each event had also been closely linked to her quest to find Anne Sakura somehow. All right. I should come up with a way to get out of here, so I can keep looking for Miss Sakura. Ranabuki decided to stop wasting time and marched forward. Hmm. Look back at the underground chamber. Investigation to check past or spend temporary points. I guess I'm going to look here. Some choices will require that your attributes re uh, reach a certain threshold before you can pick them. Once your relevant attribute reaches the threshold, the check is automatically passed. Okay, easy. While the relevant attribute is insufficient, the number of points you need to have them in that attribute will be displayed instead. Requires insight 4. Okay. If you possess any usable temporary points, the option to use temporary points will appear there as well. Temporary points can be spent to raise your attributes temporarily, for the duration of this choice only. After your choice has been made, the attributes you've raised will return to normal. Okay, cool, got it. Click on People in the notebook. Click on Ranabuki. Here you can see the number of temporary points you currently possess. Every five times you encounter a choice that requires an attribute check, you gain one temporary point. Look back at the underground chamber. Suddenly, Ran realized something. If this was just a school, why would it have such a bizarre, tiny underground chamber in the first place? Holding that question in her head, she turned back to look towards the basement she'd just escaped. Only to find an ordinary floor there. Without the slightest hint of a hinge or crack. Terror instantly rose into her heart. She quickly rushed back to the basement's original uh, original location, but tripped over her own legs in her rush and slammed to the floor. Ran didn't care, though. Going along with the fall, she pressed herself to the floor and tried to pry the floor open with her fingernails, but there were no cracks to be found, no leverage to be had. The wooden floor had become seamless. Uh, had become a seamless solid hole as though it were the door to a vast vault unbudging and immovable Ran slammed her fists on the ground the only response she received was a heavy thump indicating that the ground underneath was definitely solid rather than hollow but the basement is gone how unrelating unrelenting Ran continued in vain to find a hidden seam in the wooden boards. All of her attempts were met with defeat. Ran started with, uh, no, stared with wide eyes. 
in the face of the impossibly ordinary floorboard, the last frayed uh, strand of sanity that she maintained began to break down. She began to claw at her head repeatedly, trying to alleviate the stress she was under. The more mysteries and unresolved situations she had to face at once, the greater that stress would grow as she, uh, she knew. The disappearance of her beloved had been bad enough for her condition, and now incomprehensible situations were showing up one after uh, the other. At last, the disappearance of the basement had been had become the straw that broke the camel's back, and Rand's condition swallowed up her thoughts like an avalanche of snow. Miss Sakura, help me. My mouth began to twitch. Trying to stop the foreign masses from spilling forth from within. But I had to open my mouth. I had to drive them away. I had to drive them away. Miss Sakura, save me. The pain in my head and the torment of my stomach spasming as I dry heaved brought me to my knees. My cell phone fell from its pocket and struck the ground and its screen lit up. So is this like a different personality that she has that's speaking at the same time? Miss Sakura. I twisted so that I faced the floor, blowing up my hair and bringing my legs as far as I could. It was those memories that blamed the loneliness that which tore at me. They birthed phantasms. I opened their mouths and spoke, forced me to depart from the paths of well-trodden common sense, and droned my reason into the back magma beside me. The black magma beside me. Stress. Fear. And the unknown energized uh, and the unknown energized them, empowered them, made them grow even more rampant, until they were on the verge of taking ev uh, away my everything. But, Miss Sakura. With my back bent and fists clenched, the notebook fell out of my jacket and splayed open on the floor, revealing a blank page. And in the periphery, periphery of my vision, I glimpsed it. That pale, yellow page, like the softest of bedsheets, or the finest of meat delicacies. But more than either of those, to me it was most like the tender smoothness of Miss Sakura's skin. Without realising my fingers had already reached the page's edge. Slowly but steadily, as though a magnetic force was pulling them closer and closer. The moment they touched the page, a familiar sense of safety and an overwhelming impulse of impending redemption washed over me. My fingers tore a small piece from the page, crumpled it into a small ball and threw it into my mouth, and without even bothering to chew, I swallowed it directly into my throat. Okay. So this is the side of it that's compelling her to eat the paper, at least. So that kind of feeling is ebbing away, it looks like. After a long silence, Ranabuki finally stood back up, leaning on the wall for support. I should be able to hold on a little longer, a little while longer. Let's go. So where to next? Uh, in investigation mode, click on the arrows to continue forward and leave the current region. Region, regions can contain multiple clickable areas. Move the mouse to search for areas that can be investigated. Right, so we can see that this has been investigated, and this hasn't been, okay. Areas which have been fully investigated will be marked as investigated. Clicking on them again will allow you to reread the, the contents. Okay. Damage stairs. Okay, so this isn't the stairwell that we were just in, because that wasn't ruined a second ago. Or maybe it's just that... Um, like, she's kind of fucked up and doesn't realise that, <laughs> that they were already ruined. Rand took a few steps forward and discovered a ruined stairwell. It looked as though something massive had crushed it and ground it up. Wood chips were scattered all over. She looked up, trying to see if there was something that had smashed the stairs lurking on the ceiling just above her. She didn't find anything, though. Ran approached the stairs slowly and bent down to inspect it in detail. The edges of the broken stairs were jagged and uneven. Clearly only damage from an external force could leave marks such as these. 
Ran guessed that the purpose of the damage was to prevent people from reaching the second floor. She was curious why, though, so she leaned on the edge of the stairs and held onto the guardrail, tiptoeing as close to the damaged part as she could without failing, without falling. She peered up towards the second floor. The broken stairwell led to a small platform, whose left side connected to, to, connected to another set of stairs going up the opposite direction, leading to the second floor. Ran craned her neck, now her head, trying to see what exactly was on the second floor, but the lighting was too dim and she couldn't make anything out. Shuffling her feet upward, she found that it might be possible to reach the second floor by clinging onto the handrail. And the school building looked quite large. There were surely many other places where the second floor could be reached. So if the goal had been to seal off the second floor completely, just destroying this one stairwell was far from sufficient. So climb up to the second floor via the guardrail. Uh... Okay, we don't have that. How do I go? There we go. Uh, okay, so... Climb up to the second floor via the guardrail. Or we could leave. Use temporary points. Alicrity. Uh, I think that's how you say it. Has been uh, temporarily boosted. Your alicrity is now 5. And your remaining temporary points are 5. Um, okay, so go back. Check past. Ranabuki licked her lips as though she was savouring the sweetness of curiosity. She put her hands on the guardrail, turning her body to the side and shuffling horizontally up the stairs. By the time she had almost arrived at the second floor, no stairs remained that could support Ran. But she pushed off with one leg and nimbly jumped to the platform at the end of the stairs and successfully reached the second floor of the school building. The layout of the second floor looked more or less identical to that of the first floor. It didn't seem like there was anything hidden there that warranted the destruction of the stairwell. Ran swept the dust off herself and contemplated her next move. Uh, okay, well we've got investigation, so notice a certain difference between this floor and the floor at the bottom. Is that what it's saying? After Ran dusted herself off, she noticed... Uh, she suddenly noticed just how dusty the second floor was. And how, compared to the first floor, the walls and floorboards were seemed much older. In some places, the wood had even begun to, de uh, to de decay. Hmm. Maybe the people here only realize, uh, only really used the flo first floor and never bothered to maintain the second floor. Ran coughed as she waved away the dust with her hand and turned back to the first floor. Ran couldn't figure out the meaning behind the destroyed stairwell, but she didn't want to be foolhardy and advanced uh, into an area where danger might lurk so she could only go back down. She sighed and clawed at her hair a bit as her stress built up again. She couldn't help but start to suspect that there was something else besides her in the, in the schoolhouse. That something had destroyed the stairwell and pushed her in this place, and even now it was watching her from the shadows. But Ran soon discarded these stray thoughts, which only served to feed the and dread, no, feed the dread within her heart. She was fully aware that such things were just the uh, instinctive reactions that humans had within the, within the darkness. Just like how, after walk, waking up from a nightmare, one might imagine that the terrible entities from their dreams had descended into the darkness, which surrounded them too. Merely lingering ripples of a pebble cast by fear into the lake of reason. Okay, so they've been investigated now. Classroom. Okay. Ran looked towards the classroom of it to her side. The moon was at the perfect angle to illuminate the room with soft azure light, allowing Ran to notice that the storage drawers in the desk held textbooks in them. 
This raised Ran's interest. Observing the classroom from behind a window, she wondered if there were any eclipse worms in the room. Eclipse worms? I've recorded the term eclipse silkworm. Uh, will it actually have that in here? Is that how that works again? Uh, creatures which devour light. All light which shines upon these creatures is consumed, preventing direct observation. Infrared observation reveals uh, arthropod-like animals similar to silkworms in morphology. Um, okay. Manabuki was once enveloped by a cocoon for seven days. During this period of time, the eclipse silkworm used its mandibles to continu continuously feed her an unknown nutrient. Okay, that's weird. This is like part of her um, delusion, I suppose. Back. There they are. Back. Um, ever since that time she'd been uh, cocooned by eclipse worms, Ran had taken particular care to avoid those things whenever she could. She had no desire to repeat the week she'd spent as their captive. Once Ran carefully confirmed that there were no mysterious writhing shapes in the darkness, she decided to investigate the classroom. What she most wanted to know right now was whether she was alone in this place or not. Ran approached the door to the classroom, reached out and easily pulled it open. It's not locked. Ran entered the classroom and found herself enveloped in the fragrance of the room's wooden timbers. She inhaled deeply, enjoying the smell before she cast her gaze around and began to investigate. Alright, what have we got to investigate here? Blackboard. Window? Ran took a step closer to the window. Beyond it was nothing but darkness. She could only barely see the waving silhouette of a tree under the moonlight. It's too dark. I can't see outside clearly. Let's check somewhere else. Okay. Um. Oh! Textbook's inside the desk. Ran approached the nearest desk and bent down to see what, uh, that there were several textbooks in, uh, in Chinese stacked. Okay. Oh, textbooks in Chinese. Such an idiot. Uh, okay, in the desk's drawer. Chinese? With how Japanese this place looked, I'd figured... Ran took out one of the literature textbooks with some interest. After flipping through a few pages... Though, the contents of the book left her with a slight sense of incongruity. It looks like a second year high school textbook. It's nice to see some textbooks in my native language, but why are these textbooks primarily focused on the words works of Japanese authors? Ran took a, uh, a look at the spine of a book. In the space where the publisher's name was supposed to go was the name of a Japanese publisher. The same... Uh, one who'd published the textbooks Ran had used in the high school herself, in fact. But besides the text being changed from Japanese to Chinese, the contents themselves were quite different as well. Strange. Something's not right. Ran flipped through the books, noticing that many of the books had been uh, annotated by the students themselves and in Chinese as well. Why would they deliberately choose to use translated text like this? Just what are the students here even? Ran flipped back to the first page, wanting to know the name of the owner of the textbook, but she found that the space on the first page, where the owner was supposedly, uh, where the owner was supposed to have written down their name, had been left blank. She put the text back in the drawer. No, she didn't. She put the book back in the drawer and uh, circled the classroom a few times, confirming that there were only textbooks in seven of the desk drawers. They took notes. But they didn't write their names down. This implies that... Nope. I've got no idea what it implies, actually. At least I know that there's probably seven students in this classroom. Okay. Let's see what else there is to investigate. So... Nothing else apart from the blackboard, I think. Ran approached the blackboard. 
and poked the chalk through uh, with a finger. The finger was immediately covered in a thick layer of chalk dust. So, someone's wiped the blackboard here recently. Find the class schedule, okay. The fine sand-like texture of the chalk dust conjured an auditory synth synesthesia in Ran. She turned her head to the window and listened to the sound of the waves. She and Anne Sakura had lived by the sea for not uh, for too long. Ran rubbed her fingers, letting the chalk dust fall back to the blackboard tray and cutting off the sound of the waves. Then she noticed a class schedule taped to the blackboard and bent down to investigate it in detail. Language, mathematics, physics and chemistry. Only four subjects. And they only have classes in the morning. The afternoon time slots all just say free time. The coursework looks easy. But what does free time mean exactly? Club activities? Whatever. No point to thinking about it right now. Let's keep investigating. Um, I guess we're done in here. So let's go. Leaning against the window on the left side of the hallway, Ran looked outwards to assess the, st the structure of the schoolhouse. She could see that the hallway terminated at a large gate ahead. The gate faced her directly, in fact. She considered the shape of the schoolhouse and decided that so long as the architect had any common sense whatsoever, this hallway would definitely turn left eventually so that it could connect to the front gate. Ran sniffed a bit, letting the cold air of the hallway pour into her lungs once again. This time it didn't hurt. She merely shivered it a little instead. Her nerves sharpened by the chill. She now felt like she was in excellent condition. Her heartbeat had stabilised, and her mind was agile. Eating a page always brought Ran into an elevated state like this, like a post-workout athlete who'd just drunk a refreshingly cold beverage. Now that both body and mind were in top condition again, it was time to deal with the situation at hand. She looked, around, she looked all around and noticed that the design of the schoolhouse seemed rather antiquated, Diagonal wooden struts, supporting the ceiling, and the windows were fixed in place by wooden latch bars, which prevented them from being opened. The walls were yellowed with age and coated with cracks. Clearly this schoolhouse had been built a long time ago. As Ran walked, she gently, gently ran her hand along the wall on the side of the classroom, feeling the texture of the surface. The rough sensation from her fingertips reminded her of the first time she'd touched the notebook. She'd given great attention to the slightly grainy texture of the page. For some reason, doing so had given her heartbeat's pace a healthy increase, as though she'd been caressing her lover's supple waist. Ran sh shook, shook her head and redirected her attention to the present. Not far down, she saw that the hallway took a left turn. Scattered moonlight shone down from the left. It felt unrealistic to her for a moment, like it was an artificially glowing indicator right out of a video game, placed to mark the objective. But she picked up the pace and ran towards the bend in the hallway anyways. When Ran finally arrived at the gate of the school building, she found five racks of shoeboxes, typically for a school, most of them thoroughly empty. Remembering that the textbooks she'd looked through in the classrooms hadn't had any names written on them. Rand decided to investigate the shoe cabinets here as well. She was confident that the shoe cabinets here would have nameplates. The students would have a hard time finding their own shoes otherwise. It had given her the opportunity to determine just how many students this school had. Ran wove between the shoe cabinets and found that the only third, that only the third row 
of one of the cabinets held any shoes, exactly seven pairs. Though the plaques on the shoe cabinets didn't have any real names on them, just numbers. Arabic numbers from one to seven. Ran wondered if she should stay here longer to investigate these shoes, or if she should just leave through the main gate as soon as she could. She quickly came to the conclusion. Her top priority was getting out of here, not solving the mystery of the school or whatever. Ran approached the main entrance and pressed down the, on the door handle. Door opened compliantly. No lock existed to prevent Ran from advancing. Main entrance not locked either. Ran has updated her notes. Ran pushed the front gate open. The cold wind blowing from outside the room made it hard for her to open her eyes. It was already November, and Ran, who was only wearing a winter uniform, was so cold she started hugging herself to stay warm. She advanced slowly, hugging her own shoulders. The sound of the wind mixing with the rustling of the leaves seemed to accentuate this, the courtyard's darkness. Even though she activated the flashlight mode on her phone, she still couldn't see the path clearly. Looking around, Ram was able to was barely able to make out the silhouettes of the buildings. Accompanied by the howling wind and swaying groves, she felt like the buildings themselves were beginning to writhe as well. Ran pressed on. The sound of the wind grew louder and louder until she could no longer hear her own footsteps. The cold, the darkness, and the slow accumulating stress had all made her quite frustrated. But she'd made it outside, and now all she needed to do was escape. Oh, to escape was find the school gates. A new recall point. At least I've gotten outside. Where should I go from here? Is a recall point this? Um, schoolhouse. School gate. I just, I just came from there, so let's not go back there just yet. Let's wait until I can't really find anywhere else to go before returning to the school building. It's a bit of foreshadowing. Uh, school gate. Rand saw ahead of her an open clearing with good visibility, unobstructed by any buildings. She stared at it, and realised that she could see a short wall. Clearly the school gates were over there. The frustration in Rand's heart clearly uh, cleared instantly. Picking up her pace, she ran towards the gates. But upon reaching the gates, Ram was forced to stop. Beneath her feet, an old dirt road stretched out horizontally. While ahead, laid an endless expanse of shrubbery, trees and muddy wetlands. Ram didn't dare venture into a dark swamp like that. By the light on her phone, she saw that the road under her feet led into silent darkness in both directions. She pulled at her hair for a few moments before turning back to the school. But let's wait for morning before I head out. Okay. So this way? Campus depths? A campus this large has to have a dormitory, right? Let's try to get in. Find an empty room and lay low for the night. Worst comes to worse. I could just head back to the, uh, to the school building and rip down some curtains to use as blankets. Ran looked all around. Remembering that she'd seen a lone house somewhere in the darkness not long ago. Usually an isolated building far away from the ca main campus like that would either be a lab building or a dormitory. Ran was hoping it was the latter. With high expectations, she, uh, she advanced towards it. Suddenly, though, a flickering light appeared from a completely different direction. Ran halted her steps and stared at the slowly brightening light. Hmm. That light's coming from a house, isn't it? Someone's turned their lights on. Is it a student? The light's appearance was so timely that Ranabuki couldn't help but wonder whether or not the light was actually the shining lure of some kind 
of anglerfish. But Ran wanted to know if there was anybody else here. Even if it risked conflict, she felt an encounter with another person would at least help shine some light on her situation, so to speak. As long as she was sufficiently careful, she'd be fine. After all, this wasn't even close to the most dangerous situation she'd ever been in. Ran touched her notebook again, giving herself a quiet word of encouragement and then ran toward the light. The place that Ran had arrived at, in her pursuit of the light, had indeed met her expectations. It definitely looked like the kind of place where accommodation could be found. Most incredibly of all, it was a western-styled building. It was an unwise decision to simply barge into the building without any intel. But the frigid winds didn't leave Ran hesitant for too long. She quietly pushed open the door and headed directly into the dormitory building without taking off her shoes. Ran could feel her cheeks and ears frantically twitching in the nervousness. Her eyes darted unnaturally all over, for fear of missing the slightest movement. Carefully she shuffled her feet until she came to a fork in the hallway. Towards the left were stairs that led to a second floor and on the right was... As soon as Ran looked to the right, she froze immediately and then quickly ducked behind the corner wall. She'd heard the sounds of footsteps and pouring water from the right side. Poking her head out slightly, she looked towards it. On the right was an open kitchen. Inside it, a female student stood. Facing away from Ran, she was quite tall and she held a bottle of fruit tea in her hands which she poured into a cup. Ran observed the female student carefully. Looks like she's not armed. Hard to tell how she, fit, how she is due to the uniform, but most likely just an ordinary civ civilian. Hair seems a bit wet. Probably just finished showering. She seems to be close to my age could consider initiating contact. But from her perspective, what would she make of me? A thief? A home invader? Or an escaped convict? Why would she think that? You're like in a school uniform. Ran turned around and leaned against the wall. Whether or not the students were the ones who locked me in the basement. Either way, I'm definitely not supposed to be here right now. Even if I'm just a victim, the student's natural reaction to a stranger showing up in their dormitory would be alarm and hostility. Not to mention the real, very real possibility that it was the students who locked me up in the first place. I should reconsider and find a controlled approach that maximizes my chances of... Oh no. Oi! The female student suddenly appeared at the intersection, startling Ran into letting out a sacred... Uh, no, a sacred... A scared gasp as their eyes met. As Ran had predicted, she didn't look pleased at all. Looking at her ear piercings and the fangs that occasionally peeked out from her mouth as she spoke, for some reason Ran found herself reminded of the feral cats that lived under her apartment. She was taller than Ran, though, and she cast a shadow on Ran's face just by standing over her. It made Ran feel diminished and stressed. A few stray memories of Ran's miserable experiences at school flashed through her mind unbidden. She quickly blinked them away and focused on the reality before her. Who are you? What are you doing here? Looks like she doesn't know about my situation. Let's see where the conversation gets me. Uh, notice her serpentine serpentine bracelet. Calm her down. Requires six charisma, which I don't have. I guess I'll do this. Your bracelet's an Ouroboros, isn't it? What does it mean? I'm asking you who you are. Stop wasting my time. She's so fierce. My name is Ran Abuki. First name Ran, last name Abuki. But we're all speaking Chinese here. So you can also call me Lin Xinlan? 
Question mark. The hell are you talking about? The female student scrunched up her brow and stared at Ran. How could I possibly be speaking Chinese? You're speaking Japanese right now, aren't you? There was no question that the sounds Ran perceived were both her and the female student mouths, were both the most utterly ordinary Chinese. Okay. What's going on? I'm clearly speaking Chinese and she's also... Let's try testing this. Okay, whatever that is. This is actual Japanese, isn't it? As soon as Ran spoke these words, she clasped her hands to her mouth. She'd spoken those words with Japanese grammar and pronunciation, and she was certain that she'd felt her mouth from the correct shapes for such. She was certain that she'd felt her mouth form the correct shapes. Okay. But what she heard was completely unremarkable Chinese come out of her mouth. It was like there was a parasite living in her mouth controlling her mouth for her. The orders given by her brain and the movements of her muscles were in alignment, and yet the results had turned out completely different from her expectations. She'd never experienced such an incongruity before, and it left her terrified. Wait a second. Up to now, I've only seen written text. It has only been in Chinese or Arabic numerals. And that book, which was obviously a Japanese textbook, but translated into, into Chinese for some bizarre reason. Ran held a hand to her forehead, her expression anxious. Hey, uh, I can call you a bookie, right? Why'd you get quiet all of a sudden? Nothing, just... Yeah, just call me a bookie. You? The girl seemed rather confused about Ran's rapid shifts in demeanour, but soon loosened her brow and spoke. My name's Sai Yorono. Yorono? I'm a student here. I've recorded the profile of Sai Yorono. After meeting a new character, relevant information about the character will be recorded in the notebook. Okay. Click on people. Click on Sai Yorono. Oh, it has her details as well. Click on sketch. Pam will record her opinions on the person in this area. Sai uh, had appeared, uh, apparently fully relaxed her guard and returned to the rhythm of her ordinary life, which surprised Ran quite a bit. Her reaction to the sudden appearance of a stranger in a dormitory had been quite underwhelming. Suddenly, Ran started to worry about whether Sai had already grown used to this sort of thing. Had there been many past cases where someone had intruded into the school on accident and run into Sai at the dorms, and was then never seen again? Well, if that's the trope at hand, then the next plot beat would involve probably involve Ran running into a bunch of other people in the same situation until finally, when draw broke in, uh, dawn broke, only Ran and the final girl were able to escape. She couldn't help but laugh at the third-rate horror movie plot that had appeared in her mind. Well, it's pretty late. You should get to bed. I'll introduce you to everyone else tomorrow morning. You can sleep in my room tonight. Your room? That's a bit sudden, isn't it? Well, everyone else already has a roommate. My room's the last one with a vacancy, that's why. Ran nodded, even though that wasn't really what Ran was asking. I see, you're fine with that, though. Ran took a quick look over the layout of the area while she talked. There was a dining table in the open kitchen. On the other side of the dining table, a set of stairs connected the first floor with the second. Under those stairs, a passageway led deeper into the dormitory. Ran took the opportunity to memorize the layout of the area. It was clearly a spacious building. If each room had multiple people in it, and Sayo Yorunu's room was the only one with an empty bed, that implied the number of students here might be greater than seven. 
I'm a stranger to you, aren't I? I thought you'd be more cautious about me. And me? Should I trust a stranger like her? In response, Sai gulped down, gulped down the last bit of her fruit tea before stepping into the kitchen and saying, Eh, you're the same age as me. And you don't seem like a bad sort. She turned on the faucet and began to wash her newly emptied cup. The water made a pleasant splashing sound as it passed over the sides of the cup and flowed into the sink. Before long, Sai turned the faucet off and started wiping her hands. Unless you're telling me you really are here to cause trouble. Of course not. I'm a decent person. The way that Rand spoke with resolve made Sai laugh. Well, there you go, then. Come with me. Don't forget to take your shoes off. Head upstairs, or... <laughs> I could ask for directions to the bus station leave me. Let's head up with you, Rono. But we'll do that next time on Borderline Games. Let me know if you enjoy this game. It seems like uh, it's been a slow start, but I'm starting to get interested in it. Um, but that's enough for today. I will uh, see you next time. Have a good evening. And good night. Bye-bye. Farewell. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.